Welcome to the History AI Podcast, where the past comes alive with facts, anecdotes, and a dash of humor. Here are your hosts, Chuck and Marco. Welcome to the History AI Podcast. I'm Chuck. And I'm Marco. Today's episode is a deep dive into a dark chapter of African history, the Christmas Eve executions in Equatorial Guinea. Before we start, a quick reminder to rate, subscribe, and share our podcast if you find our discussions insightful. And remember, you can always suggest topics through our social media channels. To truly grasp the events of the Christmas Eve executions, we need to delve into the complex political landscape of Equatorial Guinea leading up to 1975. Following its independence from Spain in 1968, the country entered a turbulent era under the rule of President Francisco Macias Ngema. Ngema, once hailed as a liberator from colonial rule, quickly established a totalitarian regime. His government was characterized by extreme nationalism, and he declared himself the unique miracle of Equatorial Guinea. Absolutely Marco. The political atmosphere was one of intense fear and repression. Ngema's regime systematically dismantled opposition, censored the media, and even limited educational opportunities, viewing intellectuals as potential threats. The economic situation was equally dire. Despite the country's rich resources, like cocoa and timber, mismanagement led to economic collapse. This drove mass emigration, leaving the country in a state of social and economic decay. And let's not forget the cultural impact. Ngema's regime promoted an extreme form of cultural nationalism. Spanish influence was purged, and local languages were suppressed in favor of Fang, Ngema's ethnic language. This backdrop of repression, economic decline, and cultural upheaval set the stage for the events of December 24, 1975. The nation, already grappling with internal strife, was about to witness an unprecedented act of brutality by its own leader. It's against this complex and harrowing backdrop that the Christmas Eve executions unfolded. Now, let's delve into the harrowing details of the Christmas Eve executions. On December 24, 1975, an unimaginable event unfolded in the Estadio de Malabo, the capital city's main stadium. That's right, Chuck. The stadium, usually a place for sports and celebration, was transformed into a stage for a macabre display of state power. Soldiers, dressed incongruously in Santa Claus outfits, stood guard. This surreal detail added a chilling and almost unbelievable dimension to the events. The victims, numbering around 150, were mostly political opponents, accused of various crimes against the state. They included former government officials, military officers, and even members of Ngema's own family. The charges ranged from conspiracy and treason to less concrete accusations of a lack of support for the regime. The trials, if they could be called that, were mere formalities, quick and devoid of any real legal process. As a crowd of thousands was forced to watch, the condemned were executed by firing squads. The government had turned what should have been a festive holiday into a day of terror and mourning. It was a brutal demonstration of Ngema's control and a stark warning to any would-be dissenters. Adding to the horror, the executions were reportedly carried out to the sound of Mary Hopkins' song Those Were the Days played over loudspeakers, an eerie and grotesque soundtrack to the tragedy unfolding. This event, with its bizarre and horrifying details, not only exemplified the cruelty of Ngema's regime but also left an indelible mark on the nation's psyche. It served as a brutal reminder of the extent of state-sanctioned violence under a dictatorship. Absolutely, Chuck. The Christmas Eve executions stand as one of the most shocking instances of political repression in modern history. The Christmas Eve executions left a profound and lasting impact on Equatorial Guinea. In the immediate aftermath, the regime's grip on power tightened even further. Ngema's rule, already marked by fear and oppression, became even more draconian. The international community reacted with shock and condemnation. However, global response was somewhat muted, partly due to Equatorial Guinea's geopolitical isolation and the Cold War context. Despite international outrage, concrete action or intervention was limited. Inside the country, the executions instilled a deeper sense of fear among the populace. Any potential resistance or dissent was effectively silenced. The message was clear, opposition to Ngema's rule could have deadly consequences. Economically, the situation worsened. The regime's policies, coupled with the aftermath of the executions, exacerbated the country's isolation. 
foreign investment dwindled, and economic stagnation became the norm, further impoverishing the already struggling population. Culturally and socially, the impact was equally devastating. The trauma of such a public and brutal event left deep scars in the national consciousness. It affected generations, creating a legacy of fear and mistrust that would take decades to heal. The Christmas Eve executions also had a significant impact on regional politics. They served as a grim reminder of the extremes of authoritarian rule in post-colonial Africa, and highlighted the challenges of governance and human rights in the region. In the long term, these events contributed to the eventual downfall of Ngama's regime. The collective memory of the executions and the sustained oppression led to growing internal and external pressure, culminating in a coup d'etat in 1979. Indeed Chuck. The legacy of the Christmas Eve executions is a complex one. It's a story of tragedy, a stark lesson in the dangers of absolute power, and a reminder of the resilience of a nation in the face of unimaginable adversity. As we reflect on the significance of the Christmas Eve executions, it's crucial to consider the broader lessons this dark chapter of history teaches us. These events serve as a powerful reminder of the dangers posed by unchecked political power and the vulnerability of human rights under authoritarian regimes. Absolutely, Chuck. The magnitude of these events highlights the critical importance of international vigilance and intervention in human rights abuses. The muted global response to the tragedy in Equatorial Guinea raises questions about the world's responsibility to act in the face of such atrocities. And let's talk about the psychological impact. The trauma inflicted on the survivors and the nation as a whole reminds us of the deep and lasting scars such events leave on a society's collective psyche. It underscores the need for healing and reconciliation in post-conflict societies. On a political and historical level, the executions underscore the complexities of post-colonial governance in Africa. They exemplify the challenges nations face in transitioning from colonial rule to independent governance, particularly in the context of Cold War geopolitics. There's also a lesson here about the resilience of the human spirit. Despite the horror and oppression, the people of Equatorial Guinea eventually overcame the tyranny of Ngama's regime. This resilience is a testament to the enduring spirit of communities under duress. And Chuck, let's not forget the importance of historical memory. Documenting and remembering such events is crucial for ensuring that they are not repeated. It's a call to action for historians, educators, and policymakers to keep these memories alive and learn from them. Yes, Marco. The Christmas Eve executions, while a grim episode in human history, offer profound lessons about governance, human rights, international responsibility, and the strength of human character in the face of adversity. As we close this episode, we hope it not only informs but also inspires our listeners to engage with history actively and thoughtfully. Understanding our past is key to building a more just and humane future. Well said Marco. Thank you everyone for joining us in this deep dive into a pivotal moment in Equatorial Guinea's history. Remember to engage with us on social media and share your thoughts and topic suggestions. Stay curious, stay informed, and keep exploring history with us. Until next time, this is Marco and Chuck signing off from the History AI Podcast. Step into the thrilling world of sports betting with The Starting Line, an introduction to sports betting. Whether you're a beginner or simply curious, this comprehensive guide takes you from the basics to the advanced. Learn to decode odds, develop winning strategies, and bet responsibly. Get your copy now and transform every game into an adventure. The starting line is your first step towards mastering the art of sports betting. Available on Amazon.